Hey, what's going on everybody? How's everybody doing? I hope you're having a great day. What'd you say? How you doing? <laughs> you ain't had your coffee yet? I understand. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a great day out there. Um, uh, I had to pull my shade down. The sun is like really blazing out there today. It's going to be like a 60 degree day. I don't care if it's 60 below or 60 degrees above. I love being alive. I love any kind of weather, the worst of weather, I mean, no, like, tragedies or nothing, but as far as, like, cold and, and snowstorms and rain and hail, you know, nothing to damage nothing, but it just adds excitement to the day, you know what I mean, uh, character to the day, if you will. Um, it's just pretty amazing, guys, but I'm just sitting here, getting ready to go down and um, here shortly, about, it's 925 Eastern Time here in Michigan, I'm heading down to um, Pastor Kim and Dennis's house to finish up the pine needle work and get them back into the woods where they belong. <laughs> I officially can say, guys, I like pine needles and leaves on the tree better than I do the ground. <clears throat> I think we all agree on that one, right? <laughs> but praise the Lord, and I'm going to get into this study, and it's a really beautiful thing, and um, it's uh, the comfort of Christ coming, right? And I'm going to be reading out of my new uh, Disciples um, Daily Devotional Upper Room, and um, I think... Um, Miss Billy Peak, our Air Force veteran, our Christian sister, more importantly, soldier of God, who blessed me with this as a gift. And uh, it's just really amazing. Um, yeah, the love of Christ in this lady's heart. She's a beautiful Christian sister. And all my beautiful Christian brothers and sisters out there with that love and caring kindness of Jesus Christ in their heart to do these selfless kind acts, you know, um, for other people. And um, this book is really helping me with this video ministry. God has blessed me with this job, this opportunity to bring you God's word. And, um, you know, I'm just doing my best each and every day, guys. I let the spirit flow through me. And then I take over, you know, God allows me to shine just a little bit. You know, it's like this much me and all of him. This 99% God and 1% and Daryl. <laughs> but that's a true story. <laughs> but I'm going to read. We're going to start with God's Word. It's 1 Thessalonians. Um, um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses, um, let's see here, 13 through 16. 17 I believe let's go to the book and see what they recommend 13 to 18 actually guys but I'm going to start it off with God's word first before I get into the devotional okay we're going to bring it with our treasure this is like my treasure chest right our Bibles guys <sighs> with all this treasure in here and I'm going to share some nuggets of treasure with you <laughs> all right here we go guys the comfort of Christ coming that's the um I'll just show you where I'm looking at here I got little headings See, it's like um, chapter 4, but there's plea for purity, and then it changes subject, a brotherly and orderly life, and then comfort of Christ. So it changes um, changes topics throughout that, and I love this uh, new King James uh, Nelson Study Bible. It's just a fantastic gift to me. Uh, it was like the fourth day in prison, a Native American brother, regardless of his nationality or whatever, I shouldn't even mention colors anymore because colors don't matter, man. I don't care if you're Polish, Italian, Hispanic, uh, Native, it doesn't matter. We're all human beings, man. If we could just look past all this um, manly traditions and just look that we're all Gentiles and God's chosen people, the Jewish people, and we're all Gentiles, you know, I, I once I gave myself to the Lord, I really don't care about my family's history as far as, like, I'm Croatian or Polish. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong now. But I'm a child of God now, you know, and um, that's what matters most now, my, my family here in this book. Um, but here we go, guys. The comfort of Christ's coming. It says, But I do not want to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And go over here to verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then he who are alive will remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and meet the Lord up in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words, guys. 
Woo! Hallelujah! Amen to that scripture, guys. And that's amazing scripture because no matter what's going on here, God's going to take us up. I don't know if he's got a big shop back up there he bought from Home Depot. <laughs> I'm only joking, right? I don't want to confuse anybody out there. Somebody just watching a video for the first time going, Oh, Jesus is going to come with a shop back and get us. <laughs> No, it's not the case. It's just me being funny, or my attempt to be funny. <laughs> my very little humor. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, it's just it's just amazing. It's just gonna the dead in Christ will rise first. Meaning everybody who believes in Jesus Christ right now, believers in Christ who accepted them and said, "Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. Wash me clean." Right? You believe in God and Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The dead in Christ will rise first. So all the believers, all our family and friends in the past who passed on and went home to the Lord, like my mom and dad, lots of family and friends, right? Um, they're up there asleep, you know? And um, they're up there sleeping right now. And Jesus is going to wake them up and say, hey, time to wake up. They say asleep because Jesus is waking them up. It's like if I was asleep on my bed and you came in my house and said, Daryl, Daryl, wake up, wake up. I'm going to wake up. So, And for us, uh, living here and the tribulation comes... Jesus is going to take us up into the air, you know, take us up, you know. The dead will be judged first, and then we're going to be sucked up out of here. However that will happen and go down, I, I ain't going to be afraid of heights that day, guys. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, but I'll read the study note real quick. It says, um, in, six, let's see, in 16, it says, Accompanying the descent of Christ from the heaven will be the voice of the archangel, perhaps Michael. It will be Michael, right? That's what the Bible says, right? Perhaps, Michael, it says here in my study note, it says, Who is betrayed as the leader of the army of God, right? And that's the army we all are in, guys. I salute all my soldiers of God out there in the kingdom of heaven's army. Michael the archangel leading the way, and Jesus is leading him. Hallelujah. The only other angel named in the scripture is Gabriel, who is given a prominent role in a, as a messenger of God, right? He gave uh, Jesus' name to Mary, right? Talked to Joseph, right? And uh, let's see here. It says the archangel's voice will be one of a trumpet because of the great victory at the coming of Christ. Commulating thousands of years of spiritual conflict with Satan, right? Boo, Satan, boo. The final signal will be the trumpet of God. So when you hear a trumpet, guys, going off in the air, man, you know, everybody out there, that's going to be the day of a glorious, glorious day. I cannot wait for that. But I hope he waits because I want my family and friends to be saved, my nieces and nephews, my sister, and who don't know the Lord as their Lord and Savior, my brother-in-law. I want them to ask Jesus Christ into their lives and do their best, you know. And then they're saved, man, you know. But as long as you don't ask Jesus into your life and, and be clean and cleansed of all our sins that we were born into the sinful world, sinful world god doesn't want anything to do with that sinful filth that's on us we need to be washed clean by god and show him respect by humbling ourselves and saying i'm truly sorry for stealing or lying whatever you did in your life whatever it is small or big stealing a piece of gum to murder in god's eyes guys forget what people say um picky brothers and sisters but a sin is a sin some are horrible yeah against kids and animals and all elderly people in uh, old age homes and everything right but they're all the same. This is what I've come to realize after what I've been through, um, being falsely accused, and then being around people who actually committed crimes, who gave themselves to the Lord. I had to love them because God loved them. It's that simple, man. We gotta. We can't pick and choose what we want to do. We can't play God and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I understand it's a righteous anger, so we're going to lay that to rest. But it's all good, baby, baby, right? It says the final signal will be the trumpet, right? It says that the three elements consisting the shout of the Lord himself, the voice of the archangel, and the trumpet of God perhaps separates the events occurring in a rapid succession. You're like, one, two, three, right? You know, whatever, whatever, the archangel and the, the trumpet and God, however that goes down, right? It says um, living Christians will be caught up together with other believers in the clouds. Whew, wow. Meet the, and meet the Lord in the air. Meet the Lord in the air. Um, the, word, the word rapture comes from the Latin verb meaning caught, caught up. So it's a Latin word. Um, rapture is a Latin word. That's really awesome, right? This is why this study Bible is so good to me, man, and God wanted me to have it so I can share this wisdom with you guys. And it really helps me, man, to break down the scriptures. So, so it's a Latin word, right? Rapture is a Latin word. I never knew that. It's a verb meaning caught up. In the clouds probably refers to the atmosphere clouds that also um, will attend the second coming. Hallelujah. Or the resurrection, um, the resurrection of Jesus, right? Um, well, let's see. Or it may be the resurrected multitudes that are referred in the cloud, as, as, of, as of the cloud. 
referred to as a cloud. So we're going to be lifted up, guys, in a short nutshell, in a little nutshell here, right? I got some sun coming through here, man. Um, got some lines running down my face. <laughs> Just noticed that. But um, it says in the Bible, the Lord is often accompanied by clouds, signifying his glory, right? So, and um, that's pretty much it. It says the wonderful truth describes is to be comfort to those, the Thessalonians, and to all Christians that have mistakenly thought that only those who were alive at the time of the coming of Christ would witness and share in the glory of it. But in fact, the Christians who have died will be raptured, will be raised up first, like Scripture says, right? And so go before the living to be gathered in the sky. So that's really amazing, guys, right? And, um... I mean, it's just so full of joy and everything. I mean, it's just amazing that the dead in Christ will rise first and then the living will be judged, right? So people who thought, you know, people who passed away don't get to go to heaven. This is what the Thessalonians, the Thess I can't remember their names, but the Thessalonians uh, right here in their church, um, they thought if you die, you know, you don't get to go to heaven, right? But in reality, Paul had to explain what Jesus' teaching was because Paul walked with the Lord heard and wrote about what he said, right? He just didn't make up things. This is stuff that he witnessed and um, wrote about, right? It's a history book, the Bible, to all the non-believers out there that might say, oh, it's a book. You know, you believe everything about George Washington, don't you, in your history book at high school? Believe this Bible and everything about Jesus, and your life will change forever, and you'll have salvation. Hallelujah. So I'm going to get on out of the Bible here, and we're going to go to the um, beautiful book here, beautiful gift from God through Miss Billy Peak, Air Force veteran and my soldier of God, sister, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Billy. I really appreciate your kindness and love of Jesus and forgiveness. You're, you're a wonderful, wonderful lady. And here we go, guys. The good news, right? The good news of Jesus um, returns, fills our sails with winds of the hope that propel us forward even in the most difficult days. This propelled me through my, my, false, my falsely being accused as lie from hell. This propelled me through my tough days, guys, knowing that Jesus was coming. And no matter what I went through here, I had to suffer and go through things just like Jesus did to fulfill God's perfect purpose. My suffering, like Jesus is suffering, your suffering, other people benefit from our suffering. And as soldiers of God, we have to suffer for, like our, our soldiers suffer and pass away, right? Bless them too, and I salute all you guys and women out there that serve our country. God bless you all. Um, thank you, Robbie, Robert, and um, Robert's uh, Croner's uh, son, serving our country. Thank you, brother, and uh, to everybody out there. Sometimes we have to go through tough times so other people can benefit from it. I'm gonna kind of lean over here to get that. I'm not even gonna worry about it. The enemy's trying to distract me with with worrying about this thing on my face, <laughs> but it ain't about Daryl's face. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's about God's word here. So we're gonna get with this now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making that distraction go away. Those who have died are not gone forever. Present sufferings will not last. Jesus is coming to clean up the mess, including all our broke all our broken promises to God. We don't have to solve everything, and it doesn't all depend on us. We have the freedom of relying on the hope of Jesus' coming again. At the same time, the promise of Christ's return applies to the pressure to our lives. Applies a pressure to our lives. This restoring of all the justice and peace involving calling to the world to account. Paul, Apostle Paul, describes an act of indis Irresistible authority, I'm sorry, act of irres irresistible authority. For the, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of the archangel, and will sound the trumpet of God. I don't know if it will sound like that, but that's just me being me. <laughs> so it says, Christ, um, Christ's dominion is, um, is so through, is so thorough, I'm sorry, so thorough that even the dead must obey the summons, right? God is just, when he summons, even the dead's going to go, huh, what, wake up, God's calling us, we got we to gotta wake up from being dead and go, <laughs> it's, how, it's how awesome God is, man, uh, you know, it's just amazing, right, the great adjustment of creation back to harmony means revealing everything for what it, what, for what it is, and that includes us, so like the Old Testament passage, we study the context of this magnificent hope, urges us to, to readiness and right choices, right, to stay on the right path with Jesus and keep doing right till that day comes. Earlier in chapter 4, Paul 
has solemnly warned the Thessalonians, right? Thessalonians are just like us, guys. These people back then are us today. It's that simple. And Paul's word to them is from God, who is the same yesterday, then, today, and forever. Nothing's changing, okay? We're these people, and the word of God don't change, okay? So it applies to us. It's amazing, the Bible, man, because God don't change. So what's in the Bible applies for us, and what God did for people in the Bible, he would do for you today. So have no fear. Praise the Lord. So Paul solemnly warned the Thessalonians away from their impurity and into holiness. To say, get away from that worldly stuff. Come into God. Come into the light of God and, and be holy like God, right? And, and, and live a good, pure life, man, you know? We don't need drugs and alcohol to pollute our bodies. These bodies are made to serve God, um, you know? And the only thing we should be taking in is food and <sighs> fresh air, not anything else. And we, when we feel weak, like I do most days, and sad and depressed and hopeless like I do most days, and every second of the day almost because I miss my daughter and everything I've been through, that's my cross, right? But I call on God in those situations. I say, Father, please, I feel really sad right now. Take this away. I feel really angry for the people who didn't help us. Take that away from me. It's hard, guys, but God don't make it easy. He makes it possible for me to be here in front of you instead of dead in the cemetery because I wanted to hurt myself. Because I was feeling so hopeless. But God took that lie from Satan to hurt myself away. Suicide. Don't ever hurt yourself out there, by the way, guys, before I continue. That's a lie from the devil that you're no good and that tomorrow's hopeless. Here's hope right here. Jesus is going to take us away from all of this. Just like it was intended to be in the first place. Thanks, Adam and Eve. <laughs> they ate the fruit and messed it all up for us, guys. But that, you know... It's not their fault. Satan is good at what he does. If Satan can trick angels in heaven into doing what he wants, don't feel bad when he tricks you into doing something today. But just repent, clean your plate, man, and make it right. In chapter 5 now, Paul, in, in the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, in, in chapter 5 now, Paul will remind them all that when Jesus returns, the day will come like a thief in the night. That's why I tell my family and friends, you don't know when God's coming back. And if you're not saved, you're going to miss out. You know how a thief comes in real sneaky? Jesus is just coming back. Nobody knows the time of the day, not even Jesus. And he sits at the right hand of God, you know. And God's going to say, go get him, son. Boom, right? He's coming. So please, invite Jesus into your life before it's too late, guys. Five seconds, five hours, five days, five weeks, five months, five years. You're not promised five-tenths of a second after I say this to you. Please invite Jesus Christ into your life. You got my number. You got my email. You got my message here. Please ask me and I'll tell you how to receive Christ into your life. To be saved, man. God loves you. I don't care what you've done. I've been around the worst of the worst in prison. Of the lie that came against me falsely, I was in the prison system with people who actually did what they lied against me about. God will forgive them. They'll forgive. He'll forgive you. If Adolf Hitler, guys... A crazy example would have fell to his knees and said, Forgive me, Lord, for what I've done to your chosen people, to these Jewish people, these innocent folks, no matter what race they were. God would have forgave him that very day. That's how, that's how forgivable, forgiveful, forgiveful, forgive, forgiving God is to anybody who humbles themselves to admit what they've done wrong. Even something as so crazy as what that man did to people. He would have been forgiven. You will be forgiven. So don't feel like you're not good enough. God wants you. You just have to humble yourself, fall to your knees, and admit you're a sinner. Now, back to this. Um, I'll read it say again. It says in, in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, Paul reminded them that Jesus will return. The day will be like a thief in the night. Our choices, our choices matter. They don't vanish into the past that can't be recalled. They will rever uh, reverberate. Uh, I'm sorry, Rever, reverberate, reverberate, R E V E R B E R A T E, reverberate in God's eternity. I'm going to look that word up and have it in the link what it means because I, I can't even speak it, more or less know what it means, but I think it's meaning God won't forget anything. You know, the, God will always, He's going to judge us on the good and bad. So any act we do, I think this word means we it will be brought up into the light for us to be judged, no matter what we've done. The good and the bad, we, we, we will be judged on. Apologize for that, guys, but I'm pushing through this, man. I'm a, I'm a soldier of God. I'm not perfect. I'm just here trying to do God's work the best that I can, and this is the best I can do. And 
with God, it's a great thing. So we want to be found going about the Lord's business. We always want to be doing God's work, guys. You know, we don't want to be out here lying and stealing, um, being selfish, seeing an old lady can't get her water jugs from Walmart into her car. Run over and help her, man. Don't keep walking by like you didn't see that. That could be your mother. That could be your grandmother. Wouldn't you want somebody to help her, right? So we got to keep doing God's work. So what we want to be found is about is doing the Lord's business. We want to accept Christ's return. We want to live ready in each moment for Christ to shine full light into our lives. It says, Lord Jesus, it's like a little prayer at the end here, guys. And before I get into that, I just want to say thanks for joining me each and every time. Um, I have hope. I always say I hope this helps you out, but I have hope it will because God has me here doing this. And whether one person watches it or 10 million, whoever sees it is meant to see it. If it's just one person... I'm happy that someone got something today from the Lord for me because it's an honor and privilege to work for the Lord each and every day. It says, Lord Jesus, give us grace to ride the current of both the accountability and the hope of your return. Amen. Guys, I love this book. It's so special. And again, thank you, Billy. Thank you, Father, for blessing me with a good Christian sister like Miss Billy Peak. And thank you again for your service to our country. Salute you, Billy Peak. And I salute you for being a soldier of God in, in God's army. But guys, I love you very much. And um, I just say get out there, have hope. And uh, remember, Jesus is coming for us, guys. And he come like a thief in the night. So get saved out there, people who ain't saved in my family, in my community, neighborhood, whoever's watching this. If you don't know Jesus Christ and to whoever's watching this, believers, please stress the message that I'm giving from God, Holy Spirit, for me to you. And now you take it and share it. All right, about salvation. Share these messages. Don't keep them. Don't keep them. Don't be greedy with God's word. Share, 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 okay? God bless you. Peace be with you. And I hope everybody has a beautiful day, a beautiful weekend coming up. Today's Friday, but to me, when you got Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior in a relationship with Father God and the Holy Spirit, God's very presence living in you, every day is like a Friday night. It's full of joy, peace, and good times, man. You know? Yeah, I cry. I get sad. I get lonely. I get angry. But I lift it right away to God. I don't hold on to it. I don't run to the drug man no more. I don't run to the liquor store. Because that doesn't solve anything. The problems were this big. Now I just got this big. Because you put them off. I mean, put them off. I just lift them up to the Lord now. Take my garbage like I set my garbage outside to the, for the trash man. He takes it away. God's the same way. Set that trash, that anxiety, that depression, that hopelessness, that anger. Set, set, that, set that out on your front step. And God's going to come by with a dump truck. Right, the trash truck, pick it up, take it to the dump, and it's not in my house no more. It's not in my house no more. My temple, right? This is my house, and that junk's coming out of here like the trash in my trash can over there. We'll go out to the dumpster and go to the trash dump. Do that, guys. <sighs> Peace be with you, baby. Go Terps, baby. Yes, sir. Little D out there, back in Bmore City, baby. Let's go Terps, man. <laughs> See what we can do. But it's just, just fun, guys. It's just football, just basketball, it's just sports. But it's all about, you know, Jesus Christ and spreading his love in this hateful world. Spreading hope in this hopeless world. And spreading salvation and how to get there to heaven through Jesus Christ is the only way, guys. Talk to you soon. And if the good Lord takes me home before you and I go home before you, I'll leave the lights on like Motel 6. <laughs> I love you guys. Have a beautiful day. Keep shining. Keep smiling. Spread that love of Jesus through your community, through our country. And let's pray to God for what we need and what we want for our family members, for our communities, for our country. Lift them worries up in the air in a prayer and leave them right there. No prayer goes up unheard. God's listening to everything. Send it up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, guys. Hallelujah.